Hello friends, welcome to Geeky Rabbit. Welcome to our series on Gmeter. In the last session, we saw that how to validate the response code that is fetched from the server response using a BeanGL assertion. Now in this session, let us see a few different methods that will fetch in different data from the response. As we had a fetch response code, response body, and the response header in our first session, let us now start with response headers. So the first thing that we would be fetching today is the response header. So to do so, First of all, open your JMeter console. Now, uh, in my last section, few of my users were having uh, difficulty in viewing the test plan in this particular background. So we'll be changing the background of our JMeter console. So for to do this, go to options, look and feel, and change it to Nimbus so that it turns white, and just quickly restart your JMeter once. So once your JMeter uh, restarts, we'll quickly open the test plan and we will see how we can fetch the response header from the response using the different methods. So now let us quickly open our test plan. So this is a test plan that we had first seen. And now in this, we are doing a HTTP request to the IMDB server. And in the post processor, we are just fetching in the response code, response header, as well as the request body. Uh, so to print it out on the JMeter console, we will have to just un Com comment this out and this command will allow you to print the response code into the JMeter console as well. So now for now we are we will be seeing it in the log viewer and we are not printing it on the JMeter console. So just comment it out. Actually what we will do is we will just comment the whole thing out or we will just remove the whole thing and we will start afresh. Also we will not need this JMeter assertion so I will disable this for right now. Okay. So the first thing that we will be fetching in is the response code, uh, response header size. So in this, we'll be doing that by writing CTX. So CTX holds the previous response. So just type in just previous result. And in this, we need the, we'll get the header size. So this will return us the header size. And now as we want to print this in a particular, so we'll use the log info, log dot info come one, this one, and we'll type in response header size is, and just, okay, so it is ready. So now we'll just go to options and we'll enable the log viewer. So we'll quickly clear the, previous result and now we will run this command and we'll see that whether the header size has been printed in the log or not. So just quickly save this once and run it. Okay, so once this is, it is successfully run, we will see, okay, so it is still running and now it is, the HTTP request has been successfully ran and now somewhere we'll get the header. Okay, so let me check what we have given in here. Okay, so it is headers, not header. Okay, so that's why we got this error. We can see we got this error. Problem in being shield scripting, error in working BH method. So that's why we got, so just clear it out and save and run this once again. And this time the header size should be printed. So let us quickly wait and you can see in here the response header size has been printed so it is 535 so it is printed in this way we can also print in the board response body size so to do so just quickly copy this and we have to just make a few changes in here we have to say get body size as long so this method will bring in the body size and just will print response body sizes. So what we'll do is what, what are the different methods and what are the different response that we can fetch. We'll write it down first and then in one go, we'll see whether all, all of it is fetched. So right now we have got in the response header as well as the response body. One more thing that is we can bring is the content type. So for doing so, we can just copy this command and put in here. And we can go and just change this to content type. 
so we'll get the content type okay and content type is so we'll change this method a bit message sorry content type is okay so content type is also done now we'll bring in the so sometimes you will have to see what thread is running so for that you'll have to get the thread name so we'll also print in the thread name yes and we'll have to change the method to thread name okay so now we have got four of the response parameters so now what we'll do we'll quickly run and see whether we are getting this and we'll then we'll move forward so now i've ran the test plan and now in here you can see we got the response header size then we got the response body size then the content type we have got so content type will exactly match to this so whatever is the response header so a content type will match to this so the content type here is text plane so as it is it is printed in here text plane here and now the thread name is thread group one of one as we have only given one thread okay so now just quickly go to the pre processor and we can see what we can fetch more so now after this if we want to print in the start time as well as the end time when the thread started and also the total time that thread took for execution we can do that also so for doing that let us print first of all a divider so so let us print star 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 so this is just for separating this so this will be printed now you will we'll fetch in the start time so just take this method one of this method and print in here and just change the method name and so just see so in here we have to get the start time so we'll write it gets start time and here we'll write start time is in the same way we'll get the end time as well we just copy this paste this twice and write it here end time and in here we have to get the total time so just remove the start so just print in time so here it is total time And here it is end time so i hope this message is good and now we'll print this divider again to separate it out okay so now let's quickly save this and run it and see what parameters we are fetching in from the response and printing it out here so now the response header body content type third name is printed along with that the start time end time as well as the total time in milliseconds is being printed so the start time and end time is in given epoch format so you can, if you want to see just copy this go to your browser and just type in epoch converter so there is a date time converter just copy in here and just print this copy this timestamp from here and just convert this so you'll see the ran date actual ran date is being printed in here so it will be converted or in the same way if you want to see the end time just copy this so it started on 12th march at 1 14th and in my time zone it was at 6 44 if you see the end time there will be so this is 6 44 36 and if you convert this so it took exactly three seconds so it is 6 44 39 and we can see that in here this is exactly close to three seconds so these are two seven six nine milliseconds so in the same way if you want to print the url as well of the running thread you can do that so for that just copy this method and print in the url so for that you have to just change this method to get url as string as and now we'll see that we'll print the url of this request 
the message. So this will print in the URL that is taken as a part of your HTTP request. Now then if you want to see if there is any error count or as well as latency, you can do that as well. So to get error count, we have to just change this method to error count and error count is so it will if there is any error it will print the count of it and if we want to see the latency just give your latency so this will print the latency in this request okay so now as we are done just clear the results save it and see what all things are printed So the request is still executing and now you can see the response header, the response body, the content type, thread name, start time, end time and total time is being entered. But there is some problem with the URL and I guess we have just specified the method wrongly. So just let us go and see. Okay, so just make this US capital uh, so remind uh, you have to use camel casing here so keep in mind that that we will have to use always the camel casing and uh, now let us check whether it's printing the url so earlier the format was not in camel case that's what uh, that's why it was not printing so now you can see url of the request is this so this is the exact request that we intend as a part of that HTTP request. And now uh, the error count, there was no error as this is only one request and it passed. So the error count is zero and the latency is triple one zero. So latency, if you can see, it is the same exactly what we had. So this exactly matches to the, what we get in the sampler result. So these are the different methods that you can use against your response and you can get uh, whatever parameter from the server response. And in here we are generating the response and fetching the different parameters from the response successfully, which can be later used as an assertion in the JMeter test plan. So all these variables that you can fetch in using all these different methods can be used for a certain testing in JMeter. So with this, we come to an end of this video in the series that was on fetching different data for the from the response using the bean shell scripting. Hope you have liked it and do post all your questions, suggestions in the comment section below. Also, see you soon with more JMeter related content. Until then, have a great time. Thank you and have a good day.